Good morning and welcome everyone. Nice to see everyone and good to have Jane leading our service this morning and Louise and Colin taking part too and good to have Rod on the keyboard. Uh, before we start, there's one or two things that I thought it would be useful just to keep everyone informed of some things that are coming up and happening. Uh, finally, the Presbytery have found somebody to be our interim moderator. So the Reverend George Shand is uh, going to be our interim moderator. Um, a few of us have met George online. He was previously minister, just recently retired over in Symington, over beyond bigger, over that way. Before that, in Jerusalem and in Leith. So uh, an interesting and varied background. We look forward to him helping to lead us. Scott, our locum minister, will be here next week, and then he's off to Amsterdam for three months. And we hope he'll come back at the end of September and pick up where he left off. So in the meantime, uh, George is speaking to someone who he hopes will do pulpit supply over the summer. But we don't have definite news about that as yet. And because that person will just be doing pulpit supply and probably won't be doing preparation for other people to lead services. We may need to alter our service times over the summer, but we'll let you know what we're thinking once, once we know the situation. So keep your ears open for information about that. And the other thing that has happened just this week is that Wilma, our office administrator, has handed in her notice. We know for a while she's been struggling because she's got other jobs and her family and so on. So she's done a great job for us and we'll be sorry to see her go, but we wish her well. So we hope, well, some of our volunteers will probably be filling in for some of the time. But if anyone knows of anyone, especially somebody connected with the church, who might be interested in being our office administrator, which is a six hours a week paid post. If anybody can think of anybody or speak to anybody who might be interested, let myself or Anne know and we'll take that into consideration when we're looking for somebody. Um, I forgot to print off some notice sheets, but they will be there by coffee time. Uh, the reason I say that is because if you've looked at your notice sheet, it says that there's a meeting of the Gallus Shields Macular Society this week and there's communion at the Wednesday service this week. No, that was last week, both of those things, so don't be confused. But you can still sign up for the celebration meal on the Friday the 24th. Give your name to Anne. I think that's all that I need to say before I hand over to Jane, just to thank everybody for all the work all of you are continuing to do in our congregation and community while we don't have a settled minister. For our call to worship, I thought um, if the ladies would join me in reading the white printing type and the men would respond with the yellow, that should work well. So let's call each other to worship. Come in through his gates with thanksgiving. Give thanks to him and praise him. He is always loving and kind. Amen. Um, a hymn which you all know, and the words will be on the screen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
the last hymn has maybe given you an inkling that today is Trinity Sunday. So today's prayers will be with that theme. And I also want to tell you about a Scottish medieval theologian, Richard of St. Victor, who once wrote, For God to be truth, God had to be one. For God to be love, God had to be two. And for God to be joy, God had to be three. Let us pray. God, who is wonderfully and mysteriously Trinity, three in one, we gasp in awe, bewilderment, and praise before you. We delight at the idea that you are a community in flow, not one angry Zeus figure far away on a cloud, but three dynamic aspects of love, beyond us, beside us, within us, always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God who is Trinity, our minds cannot fully fathom your nature, yet we instinctively feel the beauty of your abundant love that fills everything, from the micro, the tiny, to the macro, the massive, in the cosmos and beyond. God, who is Trinity, we thank and praise you that Jesus showed us how to see, how to respect, and how to value all people, and how to do so in your power, with you, and not on our own. God, who is Trinity, like a fountain full of love, always outpouring, you give us your spirit and invite us to share in creating with you as partners. God, who is Trinity, when we love each other, laugh together, pray together, play, cook, dance, lament, repent and grieve together, you're always there, beyond us, beside us, within us. Amen. And we now say together the Lord's Prayer, which is on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. readings as given there, starting with John 16. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he in the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is me from whom he received what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And to continue from Romans. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, 
because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character hope. My hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into us through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Colin. We're going to, um, Rod and I have chosen this hymn. He says you might not know it. I say they're all as old as us, nearly. They know it. So, do you know we believe in God the Father? Can we just sing it then, or do you need a practice? Right, over to you, they want to practice. is a warning those of you are wearing coats.
Wow. I was going to um, tell you the name of the Pope, but sometime 900-ish, a Pope decided that we really needed a special time to celebrate Trinity. God, three in one. So we have special celebrations for Christmas and Easter and Whitsuntide, but this is the only one that doesn't celebrate some, something that happened, but something that is. And, and so if you look at the most churches of liturgical year, this is the start of Trinity, which then lasts until Advent, when we start preparing for Christmas. So, but today is the day. And it's supposed to say reflection up there. Right. So, pagans and Greeks and Romans and Egyptians and Vikings and lots of others had lots of gods. They had the idea of God, but they couldn't pin God down, so they have lots of gods. Or at least that's my explanation of why. And the Jews and the Muslims very definitely said, God is one. God is one. There is only one God, and that's how God is. And we quite agree with that, don't we? There is only one God. But God is in three people. That piece that Louise read, I wish I'd found that. <laughs> the idea that to be true, God has to be one. But to love, God has to be two. And for joy, God has to be three. God is three, and so we find those aspects of our lives. Um, at the beginning of lockdown, the first lockdown, no, during the first lockdown, I took some services on, online, um, on Zoom, and it looks a bit, I was trying to think, where do you sit to make it so that it's church? And so, I made, can you all see this? Have you seen it? Because if I hold it up, I can't put it back again. It's my picture of God that hung behind me while I was taking services. Once I'd made it, um, it's not the best needlework, but God is love. And we all use a heart to show love. Um, God the Creator shows me at my least creative. Um, the simplest bit of the world is Antarctica with a very simplified um, Africa, Africa and, South, and South America. And then on the other side, I thought, how do you show Jesus? And the communion cup was my answer. Um, it doesn't begin to tell us about his life, but it tells us about him coming to us and, and, and his death. And then the wild bit, the unpredictable bit, which was such fun to make, is the Holy Spirit. So, but all part of love and God. So, how do you picture God? I'm not really challenging you to make a banner, but if you want to, or you want to join, the, we could have some in church. Um, you might think of God as some of these great artists have thought in the past. God cradling the world, God beyond us. Or as a father 
loving his child, um, loving us. Picturing God the Father is impossible, I think. I just went for a simple heart because how do you picture God? And again, the Jews and the Muslims are very, very straightforward about this. You don't do it because God is greater than we can picture. Um, but some of us think with think in pictures rather than words. Maybe pictures of Jesus are easier because Jesus was a, a man on earth. And so we have... Oh, it's not come out badly. I thought it was going to look a bit more feeble than that and that Alan was going to tell me off afterwards. A, a typical, what I think of as a Sunday school picture of Jesus... Here he's surrounded by British animals, animals of the world. But a picture of a love of nature, which I think we can understand, even if it's a bit, it's not to my taste. This picture I love, the laughing Christ or Jesus Christ Liberator. It's an image from liberation theology, and uh, um, it's the picture, no one knows where it came from apparently, but it's found in the ecumenical center in Bangalore, and on the prison wall cell in Korea. But it's a picture of Jesus laughing. And in Luke chapter 6, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil. This is a picture of Jesus which gives power to the poor and the underprivileged because they can laugh at those who repress them. We were looking at a set of these pictures in Forward in Faith and this is the picture that none of us liked. Um, it's horrible, isn't it? It really, it's a picture of pain and anguish and, and it tells of a man dying on a cross. Not God dying on the cross, but a man. Jesus is truly man in that picture and truly suffering, and we hope never to be tortured like that. Those two pictures show a human side of, of Jesus, but the next one I've found takes the biblical picture of Lamb of God, the Lamb sacrificed. Um, that's Dutch from a couple of centuries ago. <clears throat> Jesus is, was you fully human, fully man, and yet is fully God. And what about the third person of the Trinity? This image was created by <coughs> sorry, John Brockenshire, and it's in the Methodist Modern Art Collection, which is, of course, why I found it. It reminds us of Jesus' baptism and the Holy Spirit 
coming down to him at his baptism as a dove. And the voice of God, the Father, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Spirit as a dove. But last week, it was Pentecost, and the Spirit came with a wild fire and tongues of, a wild wind and tongues of fire, and with power. A very different picture of the Spirit. The thought of a tongue of fire coming down on you shows the power of God, the majesty of God. The um, Celtic church has had difficulty with the idea of a dove, possibly because a dove and fire don't quite go together. And they came up with the idea of a wild goose. Um... The Iona printing publications are wild goose publications. Um, And so we have this picture of a wild goose. Another picture of it is um, this wonderful knotwork, um, which appears in various places, but not representing the Trinity. Sorry, I'm reading the wrong bit. I shouldn't look at my notes. (laughs) Looking at a wild spirit. So, different pictures of of the three persons of God, but how do you get them all together? Again, from the Celtic tradition, is there a fancy way of saying triquetro or whatever it is? Anyway, it's a Celtic knot representing one God and three persons. And sometimes I like visual things and I like to talk and I like to see things visually. And so, hence my banner, the God of love, the God who is love, the spirit, the creator, the Jesus Christ, but all one in love. But how does Trinity affect our lives? What do we learn from this? We learn about unity, about a community of love, and thinking outside the obvious. God is one. As the body of Christ, we, who are all very different people, seek that that unity, that oneness. But that oneness is in love. It's a community of love. My next sentence in my notes is, this may not be orthodox teaching, but we've just heard that it was right. Because I was thinking, before anything else is God. And God is love. But if, there was o- if God was only one, how can you love? You can't say someone's a very loving person if they're all on their own and they have no one to love. You have to have somebody to love You have to be loved to be love. And the Trinity, before before creation, was a Trinity of love. So God was love. And I thought, I can't be the first person to think this, but I didn't think I'd ever read it. So... Out of that love, the love that the Trinity, God has, he chose to love more. God chose to create. 
God chose to love his creation and love us. And our love, sometimes a bit pathetic or not quite as good as we'd like it to be, but our love is a reflection of God's love. It's because God loved us that we learn to love. The other thing, thinking outside the obvious, we know that a cat's a cat and a dog's a dog. Some people can be a bit more specific and say what sort of a dog it is or what sort of a cat it is, but it can't be both at once. It doesn't happen. But Jesus, man, and Jesus, God, both at once. God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God. It's not how we normally think, especially those of us who chose to do maths because it was simple and straightforward and you were absolutely guaranteed a right answer. Sometimes you have a wrong answer, but hey, you knew that you'd got it right when it was right, and it's great. But it isn't always the answer. There isn't always a right answer. Sometimes it's a, just dwell in this space and enjoy it and embrace it and think wider because thinking wider will get you nearer the truth than that lovely two plus two really does equal four. So as we think about the mystery of the Trinity, we learn more about the love of God more about God the Father, the source of all, Jesus, our friend and our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the inspiration and power that comes to us like a, like a wild goose or a flame <clears throat> that gets us not just flickering a little bit inside, but moving The Trinity together is a large part of our faith. And so we sing again. There, there is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son.
been read by Irene McFatchen, but it wasn't on the... I, I couldn't get it, so David's reading it. <laughs> Thank you. David's not quite reading it, but I'm drawing on the words that were written by Irene from Up the Valleys and also drawing on our themes for the week in the notices. I don't know if anybody looks at those regularly, but every week in the notice says we have suggestions for prayer for our church community, for our wider community and our world. So drawing on these two, two things. So let us pray. Father God, you are mighty God, loving Father, Son of Man, and ever-present Spirit. We bring our thanks that you watch over us every minute of every day and gladly hear all our prayers. You know our every need. Even the number of hairs on our heads are counted. We thank you, Lord, for your care over us this week, and we bring to you our cares for others, those in our church family, our community, and our world. As we think of our church family this week, we bring to you especially those who live in Shawburn Road and Fairfield Crescent, Ladyshaw Drive, Thurlston Terrace, Broomhill Farm, Eastfield Road, and Leachfield Road, and for their elder visitor, that's Jackie Lee. We pray for all who live in that area and for Jackie as she visits them. May they know your love and be able to share it in practical ways with those nearby. As we think of our community, we bring to you, Heavenly Father, those who have been bereaved and those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Draw near to them at this difficult time and bring them your comfort. We pray too for those who are ill in body or mind at this time, whether at home or in hospital. We pray that you will give them strength during their time of illness, and we pray that your healing hand will be upon them. As we think of our wider world, we thank you for your wonderful, perfectly balanced creation. Help us all, Lord, to be good stewards, mindful of the impact of our lives on your world. Help us to live simply in harmony with creation, doing whatever we can to reduce our environmental impact. We pray for world leaders to have the courage and vision to make bold policy changes looking to the future for our children and grandchildren rather than their short-term popularity. We pray that you would strengthen and help all those who are running conservation programs to look after species who are in danger of extinction. Help them, Lord, to save these amazing creatures that you created for your world. Gracious God, we pray for all who are caught up in wars, coping with trauma and violence. Every week we hear of atrocities, of growing extreme, extremism, and rach, racial and religious violence. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who grieve over the loss of their church family members. Bring them your loving comfort, Lord. Draw close to them at this time and surround them with your love. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will change the hearts of those who are filled with such hatred against others. Help us, loving Father, to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to show tolerance towards others when they have different views from ours, to choose words of encouragement rather than words which will hurt, to show love and kindness to those who are in need, and to live our lives as true disciples of Christ so that people may catch a glimpse of Jesus and come to know him for themselves. We bring all our prayers before you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Our next hymn is from Mission Praise. Um, the Spirit lives to set us free. As we have sung, we walk in your light, O Lord. As we have brought our gifts of money, we bring them to you, asking that they may help others and us to walk in your light. And we bless each other with the benediction which is on the screen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>